Great. So our uh, our last company of the night is uh, Learn Street, and um, this is a question that, as an event organizer, I get a ton of uh, of questions about this. It's how do I learn to code? Um, so I was very uh, interested to have Learn Street come and, and give a demo of their product. I've uh, I've been going through some of the lessons, and, and they're very well put together. Uh, so. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having us. So, I'm here. My name is Rajiv. I'm here with Ravish and Akash, my compadres. And today, we're actually, um, I'm happy to announce that we're actually uh, launching Learn Street live to the world. So, you guys are getting the first look at Learn Street. So, what is Learn Street? Uh, can you go back up for a second? Learn Street um, makes it incredibly easy for anyone to start coding. And um, what we've done here when you learn on this page is we're, we're showing you some really inspiring images to give you context to what coding can do. In this case, Python is used to create amazing robots. Um, if you click on JavaScript or Ruby, you'll see that the images are going to change. And this shows you you've just picked up JavaScript to create a fashion site. And if you click on Ruby, we're going to show you that Twitter uses Ruby to power 400 million incredible tweets every day. So this gives you a really nice context as to what each language can do. And if you click on Get Started, what will happen is you'll scroll down, and right away you'll get an interpreter where you can start learning how to code. So Ravish, why don't you show them how easy it is to start learning how to code. So what this is is a very, this is sort of a teaser to just get you really comfortable um, in this case for what Ruby can do and, um, and how easy it is to start learning <coughs> an interpreter. And um, it's basically starting you off with some simple math um, calculations that Ruby does for you. And um, if, you, uh, if you keep going here, um, what will happen is from the little teaser here, you'll actually get taken to the full-blown UI. So now we're actually in the full-blown UI. And what we've done is we've really tried to optimize real estate here. Uh, can you go back to that screen? Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's actually not there for some reason. So let's go back to JavaScript. Ruby? Sorry. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot going on here. So if we've created a very useful instructional overlay to kind of show you what's going on. So if you click through the next, um, what will happen is it will show you each section of the UI and what it's doing. So in this case, this is your the area where you're going to be um, seeing the instructional content for each lesson. That is your progress bar. That's going to show you how many lessons there are in each course. And each um, lesson consists of anywhere from 10 to 15 exercises. This is your um, method description um, that shows you what each lesson is in a course. This is your sub-progress bar that shows you um, how many exercises are within each uh, lesson of the course. And then you have the ability to restart the lesson for any reason if, you're, if you want to just restart it, if you made some mistakes. We also have um, a way to, if you get stuck, you know, we have a place for hints. And also, if you want to tweet the instructor, you can tweet the instructor and get answers um, on any coding questions you might have. Um, there's more. There's a pull-out panel that also gives you a description of the course. Um, there's a table of contents. These are where your hints show up. Then there's a Q&A, and there's also a glossary. Um, so what we've done is uh, you can close it out. And if you go back to courses, just to show you. So our focus right now is JavaScript, um, Python, and Ruby. And one of the other nice things we have in um, is if you scroll down, we have also included, um, can you go back to JavaScript? Or Python's fine, too. Uh, uh, videos that actually accompany each lesson. That sort of is a very nice way to give context to what you're about to learn. Um, so it's a good way to give an overview of the lesson you're about to take, and then you can dig, dig in and really start learning how to code by doing it. Um, another great section we have on our site is a place called Code Garage. And what this is is um, an area uh, if you will, of a coding playground where you can go in and tinker with existing code blocks. And what we've done is we've created some really um, cool projects with some beautiful UIs. Um, you can keep scrolling down. 
So here's some examples: Build a Blackjack, Conway's Game of Life, Mastermind, Form Validation. So let's let's take a look at one of these um, one of these code garage projects. And again, the idea here is if you have some coding knowledge, you can come here and actually try to write the methods to get the games to work. In this case, it's a it's a Hangman project, um, and what it is is basically to the left here, you actually have a code editor and it gives you some instructions on what you need to do. Um, and actually, we don't need to go through the, through the uh, instructional tutorial there. And again, if you know how to code, which Ravish is a pro coder, um, you can actually write the methods to, in this case to get the Hangman game to work. So it's a, it's a great place if you know how to code to just go in there, test your coding skills. We have some beginner level projects. We have some advanced level projects. And we're going to continue to add to that um, coding library. Real quick, I want to show you dev tools and, and contribute as well. This is basically an area that gives you a better understanding if you want to become a programmer what it takes to actually program, which is much more than just the fundamental language. Um, you need to know things like what an IDE is, or what Git is, or what version control is. And essentially what we've done is we've just called the web and provided you some, some great um, resources on um, what each of those uh, development tools are. And we've also broken it down by, by language uh, for JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. Um, and again, it's just a great way to, to learn more about, if you're interested in JavaScript, what jQuery is and, um, and uh, what JNode is and not.js, et cetera. And finally, we have a section on the site called Contribute, where um, we are asking people to contribute to um, provide um, instructional content for certain um, for certain topics like HTML5 or Android or CSS3. In this case, we're trying to ask for uh, for contributions in the in the vein of discrete concepts as opposed to an entire course because writing an entire course is takes a lot. We've actually um, been writing our courses for the past several months, and uh, I think we've iterated our our courses over a hundred times each and um, heavy user testing and a lot of um, beta feedback. And, uh, and that is Lone Street in a nutshell. So we encourage you to, uh, to sign up and start learning how to code. Uh, writing, writing a course is, is no easy task, and even if you're a great programmer, what we found is your best programmers are not your best instructors, because the way they approach it is not from a beginner mindset. So um, writing a course, is, <laughs> it's an art. So if there's a brand new language, um, it can take a very long time. I don't, I don't have an exact answer for So for we long. have a lot of really smart programmers here, mm -hmm. but there's a new language. Mm -hmm. How can they use your system to learn? They can't. Yeah, our focus is JavaScript, Python, and Ruby right now. Yeah. Can I, um, on your code garage, I think that's a really great idea. Can I take an existing piece of code and drop it in? And you, I mean, like, you can do Firebug today and actually go in and get some more um, insightful understanding of that existing piece of code. That's something you drop on by a third party developer or something. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? So, yeah, so that's something that we're working in our roadmap. So we're mm -hmm. letting you actually, we'll, we'll, we'll be actually providing you with an API so that you can actually <coughs> drop in a code. The only thing we have as a, as a structure is basically we have a test harness as far as we can invoke and uh, interact with your code. So that should work. Yeah. Is there any fee regarding your course right now? or? No, right now it's free, and that is our focus. Um, we want to empower everybody to start learning how to code. Um, we believe that this is a great time to start learning how to code. Um, imagine a world where um, you know somebody who's 10 or 8 years old can come to Learn Street and start learning how to code. Imagine what the world can be like, right? So we don't want to um, have any sort of barrier in terms of trying to charge for it today. So our primary focus is user engagement and just driving user adoption. You mentioned that you can take a go. Yeah, so I should, 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 I should
someone else could actually uh, edit, edit the develop a, a course for, for a new language? So um, with that's our contribute section, where we are actually going to be um, uh, taking in contributions, and we're going to be actually assessing the contributions and who is interested in contributing, um, and actually um, having a little bit more of a control way of providing uh, new courses or discrete concepts to our platform. So we're actually not opening it up for anybody to, to, to just um, you know upload a course onto the site right now. Yes. Yeah. Two questions. One, what is the level as a programmer of your graduate? Second question, in your garage, do you have a real-time debugger? So when you make an error, the screen flashes at you and says you're going the wrong path here? Yeah. Um, so the, the answer to your second question, yes. So the test cases have been written in a way to actually catch some deliberate honey traps, which the user does. Uh, but there are situations where it's very difficult to guide the user. But some of our exercises, both in the course and Code Garage, have been deliberately crafted so that we do catch some of the more regular coding mistakes and actually guide the user through. And the first question was, what's the level of your graduate? Where would you class them in terms of, are they employable? Or are they just hobbyists? Or, you know, what would uh, you say? No, I, so I think what they will have uh, at the end of this course, which we're calling as the beginner course, is actually a firm understanding of the language. Uh, it takes hours and hours of practice after this for a person to become really skilled and employable. We're talking about a guy who's got no knowledge, right? So for example, at the end of a Ruby course, the person should have a strong understanding of objects. Should be, and we haven't tried to cover everything in the course because that would, that would be as good as writing a book. We've, we've tried to actually get to the core of the uh, language and actually spend time more on those tenets. So if you get a great understanding of objects and uh, you know, even the concepts of hoops at the end of this course, you know, we, we think we have got our, we have achieved our target. So once you've developed this community of students who've learned from you, how are you going to monetize all this? Again, so we, revenue model is on the roadmap, but that's not our focus right now. We, we just want to open up this platform for people to start learning. Um, eventually, we could have advanced courses, we could have live tutoring. There's multiple ways to monetize a product. But right now, we want anybody who's interested to start learning how to code, or if they were afraid and thought coding was difficult, we want to break down those barriers and have them come to Learn Street and start you know, just trying it and get comfortable with what coding can do and, and what it's possible for. Yeah? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Design patterns. Design patterns. That's a discrete concept. So uh, design patterns are uh, treated more as discrete concepts uh, within uh, Learn Street. So uh, over the next two weeks, you'll actually see discrete concepts as a feature that comes out. So uh, we've taken concepts like JSON, just, uh, design patterns under specific languages, and actually made them as individually available chapters. So a person who already knows the language or a person who's already finished the course can actually try and do a discrete concept, which is like a standalone lesson. So the person can actually go through uh, that. It's, uh, time for one more. Yeah, a comment and a question. First of a comment. Great idea. Congratulations. I, I think you can tell by the number of questions here that you, you, thank you. you've marked on something. So thank you. Congratulations. And one level above, you, you've uh, offered three languages today. How does even a, a beginner beginner under, choose which one to actually spend time learning? In other words, years ago, there were just a couple of programming languages, maybe three core. Now they're with the proliferation. It's not clear which one spend time on Do you yeah. provide any assistance there? Yeah, so, um, so there is an intro video for each of the languages that we have right now, which tries and tells the user what a language is used for. For example, with the JavaScript, with everything that's happening on the web, you know, all the beautiful UI that people are creating, all the cool animations people are creating, uh, you know, the, with the advances in HTML5. So we have some things down that path. So if you're a person who is more visual, who likes to see instantly what you've just created, want to feel that instant connection with something that is creative, you know, we generally have JavaScript for that. Now, for people who are a little more uh, not so visually oriented but want to get into the nitty gritties of maybe object-oriented programming, uh, you know, want to actually get into Rails as a very framework, want to get employed down that path, there is Ruby, that's a great foundation for that. There is Python, which is, again, a great beginner language which Berkeley and many other colleges also use as a great first-time language. So 
Some of these uh, are covered in the video where we try and provide the motivations of the language. And uh, the first lesson, you know, uh, you can just go through, get a feel of it. If you think you connect with the language, you can continue that path. If not, you can just go, to, go on to the other language and see where, where you really have that connection. Okay, thank you.